As we just heard so beautifully, we are meant to connect with others, to connect our separate dots and build strength as a community. This connection strengthens us, shaping our perspective and how we move through the world. We even have mirror neurons that will mirror another person's emotions so that we feel what they're feeling, even if we aren't engaged in the same situation. So, as a parent, when one of my children feel frustrated, I can physically feel that same frustration rise in me, which is frustrating, but is also helpful because I can better empathize with and support them. At the same time, in a developmental context, this connection, this mirroring, has the potential to also limit our perspective. Allow me to explain. In determining who we are, we ask questions central to developing a sense of self, but our answers often mirror those around us. So the one person who can then be left out of that conversation is ourselves. I see it happening in yoga class. As a yoga teacher, I sometimes see a student look around and then attempt to wrench their body into a mirror pose in a manner that their body simply does not or cannot or should not go in. And it's challenging to move slowly enough into a position to be able to hear what their body is saying, regardless of how it looks. We have to build trust in ourselves. Our bodies will only notify us by feeling easeful and confident, but we have to be able to hear it. And it's increasingly difficult to hear ourselves with all the sounds surrounding us. Out of 66 students and faculty, faculty surveyed at the high school that I teach at, the average daily cell phone usage is over three hours a day. It's just, it's just so easy to pick up your phone and go outside of your mind and body. We also average 100 plus pickups a day because there's always an escape, there's always a ping or a notification to ease the discomfort. But where can this leave us? It can leave us constructing a self that is mostly determined by and dependent on others. And that sounds like a tenuous construction at best. So, what if the most important relationship that you built was the one that you build with yourself? I believe that we cannot truly know others and understand other perspectives unless we understand our own. In getting to know yourself, in becoming your own best friend, you can then see yourself more clearly and see others as well. A gentler approach is the idea of self-study, called svadhyay in Sanskrit, which invites us to look at ourselves with curiosity instead of judgment. Svadhyay is part of the niyamas, which is one of the limbs of yoga as codified by, Pantan excuse me, by Pantanjali over 1,500 years ago. So it's been around for a while. And this curiosity of self-study creates space for self-inquiry to find ways in which we can actually support ourselves. Because I also see the detrimental effects of judgment instead of curiosity as a high school teacher. Returning an assessment, a student who moments before was talking and laughing becomes withdrawn, particularly after everyone compares their marks with one another. Phrases like, I just have to fix myself and then I'll be fine, or I have to get a perfect grade or I'm not good enough, sadly aren't familiar, unfamiliar. It's challenging to be curious about a mark or assessment if you allow it and others' expectations to define you. So I have a, bunch, a couple of big questions for you tonight. Do you know what is right for you? Do you listen to your body? Do you know who you are? And I have two interconnected stories for you on how to begin to answer these questions. The first is from a former student who contacted me in late August, and they said something to me while we were talking that took me back completely to another place in time. The former student was about to leave for university, but had hesitations. They said, Miss Patterson, I feel like I've spent my whole life doing exactly what everyone told me to do, and now I'm meant to take this next pre-planned step, and I'm not ready. I'm supposed to be ready, but I'm not. 
and that took me back a few years to high school as well. It was the fall of 1995, and I went in to see my counselor. I said that I wasn't sure about going to university right away because I I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I didn't have a clear sense of why I would be doing it. And the counselor said, and obviously this stuck with me for a few years, well, then there's no reason for you and I to meet again. This is for college support, and if you aren't going to college, then you'll just have to figure it out yourself. And I felt afraid, really afraid. But I also knew in my gut that if I just blindly stepped into college with the accompanying debt for me, that was not going to be the right step. So, senior class president, pretty much did everything in school. I did not apply to go to university. Instead, after graduation, I drove from Portland, Oregon to stay just, just outside of Yosemite National Park in California. This was before smartphones, so for those of you who don't remember it, we mostly communicated by carrier pigeon, um, but occasionally we would sometimes talk on the phone. Otherwise, however, I was entirely disconnected from everyone and everything at home, and I didn't have feeds filled with dorm room pictures or was watching tearful goodbyes with parents, and I can't help but wonder how that could have affected me. Instead, it was absolutely quiet. I hiked, I swam, I mountain biked, I rock climbed, I sat in nature, I journaled a lot, I cried a lot, and I, I just felt my feelings. And then I turned 18 that August. And I had time and space and quiet to figure things out. I lived at my pace, what felt natural, not society's. And it was messy, and it wasn't easy, but it was just what I needed. I would make up my mind, and then I would promptly change it because I was 18 years old. And then after a few months, I decided I would go back up to Oregon, I would go to university, and I would major in speech communications, which is funny for anyone who knows me because I graduated from university in Washington with a degree in English, so I clearly took a couple more turns, but all of those turns were worth it. And that student who reached out to me, they deferred for a semester, and then they went to university. They made room, they took a pause, and they listened to themselves, and they did what they needed and not what everyone told them to. So I think that it could be revolutionary for us to slow down just a little bit. Don't worry, I'm only going to ask you to put your phones down for maybe three minutes a day and actually connect with ourselves. And though our friends, thank goodness, are often able to support us, the goal here is to establish a firm sense of self from which all decision-making is made so that we can grow strong yet flexible like the beautiful tall trees that surround us here on our campus. So what might a gentler, more realistic approach look like? John Kabat-Zinn pioneered mindfulness-based stress reduction practices in the 1970s. And now, mindfulness as a practice is studied and utilized in hospitals, in schools, in corporations, and by individuals worldwide. And it could help us begin to hear what our minds and our bodies have to say. So there's just three simple steps to engage in for three minutes at any time of the day to begin to build a connection with yourself. Step one would be a body scan, actually physically touching your body and checking in to see how it feels. So as I move from my crown to my feet, I notice that my heart is really beating like really, really quickly right now and my stomach is all sorted, sorts of knotted up because I'm really, really nervous, but also my whole body is buzzing because I'm so excited. I feel so thankful to be able to share this message with you today. Release that and then simply close your eyes and focus on the second step, which is just breathing. <laughs> Inhale one, exhale two, Repeat as much as needed. But that breathing allows us to actually connect with the present moment. So we move away from thinking about all of the external things that are happening, and we just can connect with our bodies and slow down to check in to begin to see what we need. Finally, the third step, and I, step, and I think I'm going to get the most pushback on this one, but I think we should go old school and get journals and use those journals to record down 
how we're feeling, to basically begin to connect, excuse me, collect data about ourselves, about our bodies and about our minds. If you don't like that idea, no worries. You could also just use the app, the notes app on your phone. But either way, we repeat that day after day, sometimes multiple times a day if we need it. And then we start to collect this picture of how we actually are doing and feeling in a moment, what we actually might need at that time. And first, you might notice yourself still wrenching into that position in yoga or feeling a rock in your stomach when you receive a grade that you don't like. But after engaging in self-study for an extended period of time, one can begin to find the space between an event and a reaction to that event. And in that space, you have the freedom to choose, to gently move your body in a way that supports it, to get the grade, note the feedback, and move on to the next task. Again, it's not easy, but it's worth it. These things do not have to define you or detract from your inherent worthiness. Everyone moves at a different pace. And ideally, we all move forward, but that momentum is only real and lasting if it is in a way that is right for us. When we define ourselves by how others see us, that definition will be constantly changing. And in order to define ourselves authentically, we need to have time and space to engage in self-study and nurture that friendship with ourselves. So give it a chance. It changed my life, and I believe it has the potential to change yours. You are the only person that you actually spend your whole life with from beginning to end. So you might as well take some time to look inward, connect, and be your own best friend. And in finding some space and some quiet, you might just figure out who you really are. Thank you.